Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're back to working today on this uh, old miter trimmer project. This is a uh, part two of this series. I've already started the product, our project before, and if you want to, I want to encourage you to go back and take a look at the first uh, video if you haven't already seen it. But we basically have this miter trimmer. When I got it, it was taken apart. It was in pieces. It was in a box. It was all completely disassembled. The hardware was pretty much all gone, but the main castings were here. And so far, I have gone in, got everything cleaned up, made a break raising repair to a broken piece and got it painted up and ready for reassembly. We are ready to put it together now, but we do have a couple of uh, parts and pieces that we're still going to have to make and modify uh, to finish putting this thing together. So let me zoom you in here and kind of show you where we're starting from, what we need to do, and we're going to get busy and get this thing done. I've got you zoomed in here. You're actually looking at my personal miter trimmer. It's the same basic model as the one I'm working on. This one is a little bit older version, made in the 1890s. Uh, but I'm, this has been a good for me to have to be able to see what original parts and stuff look like. And the first thing we got to have, there's really two bolts that kind of hold this thing together. There's one right here and one on the other side. And this is a little bit of a problem. So this is a special bolt. It's a square head bolt. Uh, but the problem I've got is the head size on this is really kind of a non-standard head size. It's five-eighths across the flats on there. And uh, you can see this is a regular set screw. It really doesn't have much of a, a shoulder for this thing to clamp down on. That one's only a half inch across the flats. And, and here's a regular square head bolt, and that's three quarters of an inch across the flats. And the three quarters of an inch is too big. It won't fit in there. So game plan here is we are going to basically mill the sides of these flats off, get them down to where it's 5 eighths inches across the flats rather than 3 quarters. And from there, hopefully we can have it where we can bolt this thing together. So to machine this head, let me show you how we're going to do that. So to hold this bolt, I'm going to use a 5C collet here. This has got a half inch hole in there, and I can basically put that in there, clamp this down, and that will hold that head nice and tight uh, for me to hold it in the milling machine. Now as far as holding, actually holding the 5C collet, what I've got here is a square block. This is a pretty common thing for 5C collets. Uh, they make these in both square and hex. I've got a, uh, one of each and they're great for doing exactly this kind of operation. So we'll put our collet in this uh, collet block. There's a uh, little ring on the back here that's used to tighten this up. And I'm just going to slide my bolt in here, leave it out a little bit where uh, we can work off of it. And using a spanner wrench, I'll tighten this up. I want to make sure, let me get that a little bit snug first. I want to make sure I got the uh, head here in the right position where we can machine it and have the flats in the right, right position as well. So. All right, stick it out about yay far. I'm just eyeballing this. We're going to be cutting those flats. We're cutting enough metal off that, you know, if, 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 it, it, it's going to square itself up basically. And that's good. I'm going to get this good and tight. And now we're ready to go to the mill machine. I can put this in the vise, mill that first one, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over, four operations, and we've got a nice square cut. So let's go to the mill machine and get that done. So I'm set up over here on the milling machine now. We've got our part in here. Again, we're just going to flip it around in multiple places. I've got an end mill set up in here we're going to cut it with. Uh, I need to take about 64 thousandths off of each face uh, to get it down the right size. So we're going to start by just raising up until we just touch here. We got to the end there. And now I'm going to raise my table up 64 thousandths. And we'll very nice and carefully cut across there. Hopefully that's not going to spin in there. I'm just going to take a real light cut here, a real slow pass because of that right there. We'll stop and we're going to see if I can tighten that up a little bit more. All right, we've got this tightened up better now, I hope. 
I'm gonna try this again, come across here. Trying to grip on those threads. You don't have as much surface area for that collet to grip on. So again, we're gonna go real nice and slow here. And uh, try not to put a whole lot of tool pressure on that bolt as we're cutting across. Pardon my head, I just wanna make sure my alignment's staying good. That work much better. We will now rotate this over 90 degrees. Come back in here and we'll do the next set face. face here. I'm gonna take that out, take it over there, just deburr that edges and uh, make sure everything fits good. And then we will do another one and we'll have two bolts ready to go. So the next little part we're gonna to have to work on here is these little levers. And um, what this is, is on these wings, these wings can be go in at different angles. You can put them at any angle you want to, but there are pins in here for 90 degrees and 45 degrees. And there's corresponding holes that a pin drops down into to uh, lock it in place in those positions. The pins are just a tapered pin. So it's a standard tapered pin, just like you would use on a, you know, a pulley or a shaft or something like that. Uh, and they drop down in here. And when they lock in place, boom, that thing is, I mean, it's, it's solid. Uh, but the way you get the pin in and out is, is that they have a little lever it's mounted on top of this, it's on a little cam thing. So when you push that down, it basically pulls the, the pin up and you can rotate it around. Now, this one that we got, it did not have any of these levers uh, at all. They were all missing. And, but fortunately I had a lever on my original one. I only had one though, I didn't have two. I only had one on one side. And what I did is I, I took this uh, little casting here and I just, I filled in the, the machined out parts with some, basically some putty that I can get back out if I want to. And I sent this off and had the new, uh, new levers cast. This is made, made out of cast iron. And uh, that was done by Clark Easterling. Uh, Clark has Windy Hill Foundry over in Mississippi. Fairly new foundry I've been, uh, starting to use on some stuff and uh, he was able to take this uh, piece here and mold it up in the sand and, and he was able to get me back uh, four new uh, levers within about a week or two so that was a pretty good quick turnaround on that. So my challenge now is is I've, I've got my tapered pin in here and we got to do some machining work to the levers to get them to where they're going to work properly. And uh, I will say that on the tapered pins, I've got, a, I've got a pretty good collection of tapered pins. I run this all the time. And I had to use a, a different pin on both sides of the, of the miter trimmer. I don't know why, but uh, one side has a larger pin than the other. I imagine, I think that sometimes somebody may have modified it. I'm not sure. It looks like they're still in the right position, but um, hey, we just, we, we're rolling with the punches. We just kind of worked around that. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take these, uh, the pins here, and I'm gonna take this over to the mill machine. We've got to mill the slot down in here, which basically the, the, the top of the pin kind of goes down in there. And there's another pin, that, cross pin that goes through there that this thing pivots on. So we gotta 
cut the slot and then uh, drill the hole. And I got some little dowel pins uh, that we can use for our, our pivot pin. So let's get over back over to the middle machine and we will get set up for, for this. I got my little thumb piece here. Clamp down in the vise as good as I can. I'm, I'm a little bit leery about this. It feels like it's in there good, but I'm gripping on a very, very small area. So again, I'm gonna be taking some light passes. I don't wanna to put too much tool pressure on here and rip this thing out of the, out of the vise. Um, I need to cut a quarter inch slot pretty much all the way down to the bottom here. So we're just gonna get in there and nibble it out. And roughly in the center, I honestly, I just eyeball the center. It's not that critical here. We got a rough casting that we're working off of, so uh, really there's not any uniform measurements anyway. So, uh, in here and see how this is going to work. Like I said, I'm just going to nibble this away. I'm working slow and easy because I don't want to put too much tool pressure on that. I don't have it gripped very solid in those jaws to really uh, suit me. So uh, I'm going to take my time and just not get in a hurry here. Taking about 25 thousandths uh, on my depth each pass. And again, just feeding it nice and slow. Running about 525 RPMs. That's the two flute quarter inch end mill. Nice, brand new sharpen right out of the package. And I'm trying to look, see. I may try to take another pass out of there, but we're pretty close to the bottom. All right, that went just fine. So I'm gonna swap that part out and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. I'll do it off camera. Next step here is I wanna drill my hole here that my pivot pin is gonna fit in that that taper pin is gonna actually ride on. And uh, we're gonna be pinning that in there with a uh, little dowel pin. And I got a, I think it was a 3 inch, I think is what it is. So we're just gonna drill a through hole through there. I'm gonna start out by just uh, spotting a little place there for it to, uh, Spotting a little center on there for that drill bit to get started on. There we go. And now, put my drill bit in. And we'll drill that on through. To one side. I put a little B block jaw in here. This is uh, just got a little V in here, kind of like this, but smaller. And I've taken my taper pin in there and that's just holding it so it's nice and square. And I've got a mark on here where I want to drill my hole through here, my through hole for that dowel pin to go through. So just like before, we're going to come in here. I'm going to spot it with my uh, center drill just to get a good, uh, Good place to start. We're going to be drilling on that round, so uh, a little difficult for a drill, a drill bit. It's just going to want to skate off of that. And now drill it on through. So I think we're ready to put this together. I've got my two parts here. 
Here's my pin we're going to put in here. All right, so uh, I'm going to go test this out, make sure it's going to, everything's working fine, and then we'll cut that off. And I'm thinking what I might do is uh, silver solder those in place just so they don't go anywhere. But uh, anyway, that's kind of how the pins come together. I think we're ready to put this thing together. I think I got all the parts, all the hardware, everything ready to go. I have taken a little bit of time here and just kind of polished up this, uh, not really polished, I just took some really fine sandpaper and kind of hit this and took any rust off that I could get. Uh, and it really kind of helped make these numbers and scribe lines on here pop out a little bit better as well. Uh, when I'm working on woodworking equipment, I like to put a protective coat on here, but obviously we don't want to do anything that's going to hurt the wood. And I found that just using uh, good old fashioned wax is uh, good at protecting the, the metal, keeping it from rusting, lubricating it. And, but again, it's not gonna, if you get the residue to come off uh, onto your wood, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you can deal with wax on wood. Now, if you're finishing the wood and you have wax on there, it can be a problem, but the nice thing about wax is, is that you can easily clean it off of the wood uh, if you did get some uh, carry over there. So I'm just gonna come in here, put a little layer on there, I'm gonna make sure back here in the back and where we got some sliding parts, I wanna make sure that this wax very well down those grooves because that's gonna be the lubrication. I don't really like using uh, a lot of grease and oil uh, on these uh, sliding parts on, on woodworking equipment again because you can get that uh, material to, to get onto your wood and, and really mess with the finishing stages. So I put that on there. I'm just going to take a rag and we'll just kind of buff it off a little bit here. And that's a nice slick surface. You know, I like this to even like just the, my machine tops and stuff. Every now and then I just go wax everything. Uh, it protects the metal and like on a table saw or a joiner, it really makes the wood slide across. It's so much better. Uh, it really really is just a, a, a nice thing to do. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get all these uh, machine surfaces waxed up real quick and then we'll start putting her together. All right, I think we got everything, all our surfaces prepped. And so we'll go ahead and start kind of piecing this together. So this piece here, it's down a slot in the back and there's a groove in the top of this other piece and it's, it, slides back and forth but now if you look back here on the back uh, there's a this gear that goes in here the the handle fits down this and that's what uh, again moves it back and forth so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the gear in the center I'm gonna do it with the handles gonna be pointing up it's kind of a wedge shape there and we're gonna go ahead and drop this down uh, I think this yeah that's that's in the center Okay, go ahead and kind of place that where it needs to be. And then the frame here, now there's two locating pins on the bottom and then the special bolts that we made, we'll go through here and hold it all together. Let me make sure I got my piece in the groove up here. Getting these pins to both start at the same time. There we go. I think that's it. Okay. All right, so that's good. And now we'll take our custom bolts that we made and drop those in place. And those will tighten up from the bottom. And this bolt here is wanting to be a little stubborn. There we go. That got it tapped down. Now I'm gonna flip it up on the bottom. And we got our bolts coming out the bottom. And where's my... And we got our nuts that'll go on here and tighten those up. I'm gonna have to go get a wrench to tighten those with. Be right back. 
All right. And we should be able to just snug these right up. Okay, that one's tight. So now, before I do anything else, I just want to make sure that my part here in the back is sliding properly. Let me get my handle in here. And that feels just fine. Very good. We'll just leave that handle in there. All right, so next thing I want to do is I want to install the, the wings and they just kind of fit up here on the side. There is a set screw that goes down through the bottom and there's a T-nut that kind of falls up in this bottom here that this goes in this track. So I'm gonna rock it back on its back where I can uh, get up underneath this thing and we'll send our T-nut down or our thumb screw down and we'll just tighten this into the T-nut like such. That gives us that track for it to run on nice and smooth. Okay, and we'll do the same thing over here on the other side. Okay. Okay, that's got those locked in now. And here's our little uh, wedges that go down into the tapered pins. Let me find that one. It's gonna line up just right. So we can put that pin in there, lock that one down, it's nice and tight. And uh, when we get ready to go to 45, Come back here, drop our pin in place, and tighten it down. Same deal. So, anyway, that's good. All right. And that little cam action there pulls our pin right out. And we'll go ahead and put her in back over here. Okay, very good. Last thing we need to do here is install the knives. and. Um, you know, we got these knives. These are actually some newer knives, uh, replacement knives that were sold by Woodworkers Toolworks, our good friends up there. Uh, Bobby Knorick, his uh, family's been running that business for, man, probably at least 100 years now. Still going strong, and uh, they make all kinds of stuff for the woodworking industry, like these knives. And they basically fit in just kind of like such. And I had to order some new hardware for this. All this stuff was missing. So let me uh, get them lined up. That's just a countersunk screw basically there. We'll get them all put in. And then in keeping with the tradition of the old piece of machinery, we've got some uh, square nuts to go on the back, uh, which is just like what I have on mine. So uh, let me get those started. Okay, there's knife number one. Same thing on this side. Looks good. And there's a view from the back. 
and you can kind of see down here how this uh, mechanism works. You just got this little gear, it's free floating in between a rack on the bottom and the top. And when you turn it, there's no axle in there, it's just kind of free spinning. It moves those knives from one side to the other. Uh, the little wings out here, the one that we repaired over here, uh, that's just basically a knife guard so you don't cut yourself on that knife. But it looks good. Let's, uh, let's try it out. Well, there she is, guys, and the proof is in the pudding. Let's, uh, let's run, a piece of, run a piece of wood in here. This is a piece of oak. Same uh, piece we were playing with on my miter trimmer at the beginning of the series. And I'm going to slice that off. Beautiful. Beautiful finish there. Let me let you look at it from the back side here. We can see the action. Take our block of wood, put it back here. We're making a square cut. Of course, you can do any, any angle you want to on this, but uh, I'm just doing a square cut because that's what I got. Nice light pass here. Skew cut coming down here with a razor sharp blade. Cuts right across that end grain and just leaves an absolutely marvelous finish on there. You can't ask for better than that. Well, I think we're had a wrap on this video. I think we got everything nice and restored and ready to go here. And this is the nice newly fixed up one. This is my old one that I've had for a long time. Kind of makes my old one look a little shabby. Uh, I really need to take some time and clean mine up. I really don't want to do the whole repaint on mine. It has the original paint on it from the 1890s, uh, but it could use a, a good cleaning and uh, we can make it look a lot better. I probably do need to take it apart, you know, and just kind of clean it up, like I said, but functionally mine's in great shape. Uh, but this one here turned out absolutely gorgeous. I'm really, really happy with this. As I've mentioned a couple times, this one is headed up to the Arnfest event, which is going to be September 21st, I think, will be the auction. Uh, it'll be on a, on a Saturday evening uh, at the banquet that we do at Arnfest. Uh, we do an auction that benefits uh, the, the, the Arnfest event, which in turn uh, uh, helps to, to pr provide some support for the VintageMachinery.org website, the old woodworking machines website, as well as Illinois Railway Museum, where we host our event app. And, um, if anybody's interested in bidding on this thing, um, I've, I've talked to the, the, the guys up there. They are okay with taking some proxy bids on this thing. So if you're interested in this and you're not going to be able to go to Arnfest, uh, send me an email. So my email is right down here. Send me an email. Uh, let me know what your maximum bid is, and we will bid on your behalf. If you win it, uh, you will have to arrange to either get it picked up or pay to have me ship it to you. And I will be glad to bring it back home. I'll build a wooden crate for this thing and we'll ship it. It'll probably be a little bit pricey to get it shipped. I have no idea how much, but if somebody's interested in that, we will offer that. It, again, the end goal here is we're raising money for these organizations. So uh, we will open this up for bidding outside of the group. Of course, uh, your deadline for getting your bids to me is going to be pre prior to the auction, uh, which is going to be on the 21st of September 2018. And of course, if you're watching this sometime down the road, sorry, guys, uh, it's, it's already gone. So I will throw that out there uh, and hopefully we can raise some money on this, uh, this nice uh, piece of antique woodworking machinery. Uh, these things are fairly desirable. There is a little bit of a collector's market for them. And uh, finding an old original one, again, this one, I'm, I would have to look the serial number up, but I'm guessing this one dates from the very, very early 1900s. My guess is going to be somewhere between 1900 and 1910. Uh, I may be off a few years, but it's going to be in that ballpark. So uh, very nice, interesting machine here. So with that, it's going to be a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this quick little restoration project that we did. Uh, this one was actually kind of fun. Had some little intricate things we had to do in here. It wasn't all just clean it up and paint it and throw it back together. Had to make a few little pieces and what have you. Uh, but fun little project. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you liked what you saw, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, leave some comments if you like. Shoot me an email about it if you like. And uh, with that, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and we'll, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching as always, guys.